Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Traverse TIS. I am Ranjan Singh, Faculty of History at Traverse TIS, and this is our first lecture of History Module for Prelims 2021. Before starting this lecture, let me give you a brief idea about the design of this whole module and its utility with respect to your prelims 2021. This whole module is designed on thematic manner, means that you will complete the history based on or through four different themes like your ancient, uh, this political theme, economic theme and cultural theme and social theme. Under these four themes, you will study the history of ancient and medieval India. Modern, you have a separate uh, module. Then, one question must come to your mind. Why thematic? Why not read it in the conventional manner as uh, it has been taught everywhere? There are two important things associated with thematic study. The, four, uh, the one and the most important is definitely history is what? History is the study of continuity and change and any continuity and change can be better understood, can be better studied if it is studied in a thematic manner. I will give you an example. Say, what are the changes? If you want to study the religion of uh, Buddhism, say for example, the topic of today's lecture, if you want to study it in totality or to understand it in totality, then it will be very helpful if you study it in a theme based that is uh, you study it from the start that is 6th century BC and go on uh, studying the changes the evolutionary trend which have uh, took place in this uh, the teachings and the practices of Buddhism and its decline in your medieval India. So these kind of thematic study definitely helps in better understanding. At the same time these thematic studies also help you in better retention of some specific information and facts which are very helpful for your plans examination. We will see how in our coming lectures. The second aspect is if you see the previous year questions which have been asked in your UPSC prelims, then the nature of questions have been like say uh, with reference to the cultural history of India, with reference to the economic history of India, with reference to the religious history of India. So what does this signify? This signifies that the questions were not asked from period, some specific period, but they have been picked or related to some specific themes, say economic theme, religious theme, social theme, any cultural theme. So if you study or revise your history on a thematic basis, then uh, you will be in a better position to deal with such kind of questions. Fine. So this is the idea behind this whole concept of thematic study in history. Let's start with our first thing. As you all have already told you that I have divided this whole topic of ancient and medieval in four different things that is political, economic, social and cultural history. And this theme of cultural history is the most important theme with respect to your prelims. The upcoming prelims CSE 2021 as UPSC asks a number of questions from this culture. This culture, history, cultural history comprises of what are the things? That is religion, then also art, art both your performing and non-performing arts, then your architecture, architecture, also literature, etc. So these are the sub-themes or sub-parts which comprises or your cultural history. And if you try to analyze this, the themes, the sub-themes like art, architecture, literature, they are very much related to the sub-theme of religion. Say for example, architecture. Architecture, you study the temple architecture, the Nagara style and Dravida style of temple architecture. What are these temples? Temples are the worship, place of worship for Hindus. Similarly, Buddhist architecture, the uh, Chaityas, the Viharas and the Stupas, so they are related with Buddhism. Similarly, with respect to painting, you have Ajanta painting, Elora paintings in Ajanta, Elora, Elephanta. They are also, the theme of these paintings are also religious in character. Even other example, you can take a sculpture. The sculptures like uh, Mathura school of art, and then you have uh, 
Amravati school of art and even Gandhari school of art, they are very much related to Buddhism. So each and every aspect of your art and architecture are somewhat related to Buddhism or so, sorry Buddhism religion. So if you know the developments in the field of religion, you will be in a better position to understand the happenings and uh, know or uh, study the sub themes of art and architecture. So we, we should first start with the theme of or sub theme of religion and under this I have chosen this topic that is Buddhism. Why I have chosen this topic? This is one of the most important topic with respect to your CSA prelims. You all know that and uh, at least one if not two at least one question definitely comes from this section which have been asked in recent past and if you analyze the nature of the question the difficulty level of the question have increased manifold. So this topic requires a thorough understanding and a deep study and we tried to accommodate or we have tried to do justice with the requirements of this topic. You will feel that difference when we will complete the lecture. So let's start with this lecture of Buddhism. As you can see I have divided this whole lecture in nine subsections. I will start with background. Background means what was the underpinnings or what were the religious and social happenings in and around 6th century BC. You all know that uh, Buddhism rose in 6th century BC. So what was the uh, religious happenings and social happenings? If you know it, then you will be able to answer this question why. Why Buddhism occurred or started only in 6th century BC, not before that. Then we will see the Buddhist sources. It, not, it is not uh, only for Buddhism, for any other topic of uh, history also. If you don't know the sources, if you don't study the sources, the topic or the study of topic is incomplete. And for Buddhism, it is more so very important for your prelims because uh, we will see how these questions can be directly asked in a question when we cover the sources. Then we will move to the lives of Buddha and the teachings of Buddha. And there we will come cover all the teachings of the Buddhism, all the tenets. Say it start with your four noble truth, then we'll move to the eight uh, your eightfold path and other teachings of Buddhism. Then we'll see how or what are the changes or what is the evolution of Buddhism, how it evolved from sixth century BC, the point of its start, till your medieval period, the time which. Uh, when it almost got wiped out from the land of its origin. It's an irony that uh, Buddhism was com almost completely wiped out from the land of its origin. But we have to see, it's a fact, so we have to see and we will see in this evolutionary journey what are the changes which have occurred in this uh, teachings of Buddhism and this uh, practices of Buddhism. As you know, the starting of in the starting the buddhism was mainly a philosophical school it was a teaching for a better way of life you can say or uh, for how to attain nirvana with or by the time of modern period it has it developed into a full fledged religious domain but the chief characteristic of this period was that buddha was worshiped in the form of symbols he was not worshipped or there was no image worship of Buddha during that time. But this image worship started in post-modern period, you all know. So what happened, what was the reason that uh, this uh, post-modern period saw this emergence of uh, image worship of Buddha? And when this concept of Bodhisattva came in Buddhism and uh, when this Vajrayan Buddhism happened or became a prominent force in Buddhism, all these things will be covered under this evolutionary trend of Buddhism from 6th century BC to your medieval till your medieval period. Then at the end we will see your previous year question. Please remember attempting the previous year question is a must do thing to clear prelims. This holds these previous year questions holds a special place in your preparation and please do not skip this thing. Fine. Let's start with specifically for history, it holds a great importance. So let's start with our first topic that is background. Fine. So you can see I have put up two questions. What 
was changing and why it was why the change was happening let's first see why you must have studied in later vedic period there was brahmanization of society the sacrifices were becoming very costly affair they were becoming very elaborative affair and they were being reserved for few specific uh, learned brahmans and therefore there was a reaction from the society against this brahmanization of society against this brahmanization there was a reaction definitely there was a reaction so what was this reaction the reaction was the development of philosophical school development of philosophical school or philosophical philosophical questions philosophical questions and what are these philosophical questions the questions of life death rebirth the questions of you can say life death then soul soul or atman then you have uh, karma karma then you have concept of rebirth all these things were for the first time in the religious sphere of india all these questions were being put on okay, what happens if one someone dies is the soul indestructible or destructible what is the impact of your any doing that is karma on your soul or life after death is there is some connection these kind of philosophical questions were being put on for the first time in the religious realm of india as you know uh, before that even in ibc period and in vedic period your religious sphere has been mainly materialistic in character for example you can see the the aim of sacrifices of vedic religion was definitely say uh, to win war to win war definitely and uh, to get uh, or to get male child male child and other materialistic gains so your ibc and even vedic period the religion was mainly materialistic in character there is no philosophical thought associated with religion it was only in the 6th century bc that philosophical questions were becoming part of your religious realm or religious sphere of india and what were these questions you already have seen that that was a question on life death birth and this doctrine of samsara that is talk doctrine of samsara is your transmigration of soul so all those things all these questions were becoming or were the hot topic of your 6th century bc so why reaction and what to so these philosophical questions fine and for uh, uh, this reaction was occurring or it first occurred in this vedantic religion only may i mean sorry uh, this vedic religion only when there is a development of your vedantic school or upanishad upanishad school upanishad school which for the first time talked about your indestructible soul or atma atman indestructible soul or atman and it also for the first time talked about doctrine of doctrine of sansar and what is this doctrine of sansar this doctrine of transmigration of soul it was given for the first time in this upanishad please remember this name brihad aryanak brihad aryanak upanishad for the first the first form of doctrine of samsara was given in this book so you must remember this can also be asked in your prelims so please remember this thing got so why the answer to why you got the answer to what you got but this reaction was not a specific from this vedic or uh, this uh, part of vedic religion only or this with uh, development of upanishad school the other sects of society were also reacting against this brahmanization of society so let's see who were they let's see who were they so in a next the next question which comes is who who were they who were reacting or who were uh, developing or discussing these uh, or searching for the answer to these philosophical questions so they were the general term is your renunciants renunciant so who are these renunciants renunciants are the one who have left their home in search of the answer to these philosophical questions or in search of the truth so jo 
इस संसार की मोह माया को छोड़ के सत्य की तलाश में चला गया है वो रिनाशियंट ठीक है एंड देर वर जनरल टर्म्स देर वर अदर टर्म्स यूज फॉर दीज रिनाशियंट से परी व्रजिका परिव्रजिका इज अ संस्कृत वर्ड मीनिंग वॉन्डर देन यू हैव श्रमना और श्रमना इज अ संस्कृत वर्ड एंड द पाली वर्ड इज समान एंड इट मीन्स हु स्ट्राइव्स फॉर हु स्ट्राइव्स फॉर द ट्रूथ वॉट इज दिस ट्रूथ द ट्रूथ इज नथिंग बट द आंसर टू द फिलोसफिकल क्वेश्चन द क्वेश्चन विच हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस दैट द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ रीबर्थ द सोल दट सोल इज इंडस्ट्रक्टेबल और डिस्ट्रक्टेबल और वॉट इज द रिलेशन ऑफ कर्म विद सोल ऑल दीज क्वेश्चन ऑल दीज फिलोसफी द आंसर टू दीज फिलोसफिकल क्वेश्चन इज द ट्रूथ विच दे वर सीकिंग टू फाइंड एंड द वंस हु आर डूइंग दिस वॉज कॉल्ड श्रमन और समान एंड a specific term which is originated from this uh, is your shramanic tradition shramanic tradition in history optional student definitely have heard this term shramanic tradition in gs also few people definitely have heard or not uh, few might not have heard it the shramanic tradition or you can have shramanic movement so it is a generic term used for all these non vedic doctrines philosophical doctrines which were which originated during this period that is 6th century bc fine so first term is parivrajika then shramana the, there is one another term that is your bhikshu bhikshu or bhikkhu it means that one who strives one who lives on one who lives by begging alms begging alms means the one say for example buddhist monk they used to uh, move to door to door to and uh, searched for these arms their food daily food fine so the ones who moved door to door or from household to household in search of the food they were called bhikshus these terms are if you see why we are studying this term so last year upsc 2020 prelims upsc uh, csc prelims a question have been asked with exactly the same question that uh, these are the terms and the meaning of this and they were matched the following and most of the people found it difficult most of the students found it difficult to attempt this question why because most of the people haven't studied buddhism in such a manner and they haven't uh, come across these kind of terms all the students most of us they study we study buddhism like uh, what are the teachings of buddhism what are the happenings in the life of buddha and uh, say buddhist council and all those things the basic information about buddhism and we think that we have acquired sufficient information and we are ready for your upsc prelims but upsc are full of surprises and they definitely want you to dig deeper dig deeper and understand a specific topic in totality and that can only be possible if you read all the connected aspects all the connected aspects that includes your background so if this question or in somewhat anything related to this question comes in future you will be able to not only just uh, feel that i have read it but you can remember things because you have read it under a specific pattern with a clear cut uh, you can say chronological manner you have studied it in a chronological manner so it, it will be better for you to retain things fine so let's move to you have first we have seen what then why why and what then we have see who who we have seen renunciants renunciants the different names for renunciants and what are what does these names signify or the mean one thing i want you to notice i have used the plural form i haven't used the word renunciant but renunciants it means that there was no one renunciant there were several ones who were searching for the answer to these philosophical questions 
and definitely few become the prominent ones it was not only one it was not only gautam buddha there were others also who were searching answer to these philosophical questions so we can, we should see that who were the prominent ones uh, what are their names and what are the different doctrines which they have given it becomes pretty important for your csa prelims and uh, you should prepare it so let's see who were they of course gautam buddha uh, gave this uh, doctrine of buddhism and uh, all the different tenets associated with buddhism we will see in few minutes time then mahavir mahavir he in buddhist uh, sources have been referred to as your niganth natpattu niganth nat patu if you get this name also so please remember it is none other than mahavir himself fine and uh, associated with mahavir you know that uh, five cardinal principle this anuvrat and mahavrat and uh, then you also know the three jewels and we will see each and every aspect which is associated with jainism uh, in a separate lecture which will deal with jainism okay. fine then move to makali gosal he is associated with which sect ajivikas ajivikas you must have uh, heard during modern period the two caves the bimbi uh, this uh, of uh, barabar hills they were donated to this ajivika sect fine so uh, the leader of this ajivika sect or the founder was makali gosal and what was the doctrine he gave the doctrine of niyativad niyativad and what is this niyativad niyativad is predetermined the uh, doctrine of predetermined things means everything will happen on its time because it is predetermined nothing will change because of your actions fine so this is your concept of uh, or doctrine of niyativad which is related to uh, associated with the personality of makali ghosen then move to ajit kesh kamblin ajit kesh kamblin he was materialist his teachings are materialistic in character and it is uh, he gave this related to this lokayata tradition lokayata tradition and he said he argued that there is or he believed that there is nothing like rebirth what happens in this life remains in this life nothing passes to the other life because there is no life after death this is what he believed in and therefore he didn't believe in any rebirth concept he was his teachings were mainly materialistic in character and because of this materialistic nature of his teachings he is often associated with later school later philosophical school of charvakas charvaka school so he is related with uh, charvakas also then the next one is your purana kasyap purana kasyap he is associated with the doctrine of akriyavad 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 and uh, what is this doctrine he be, he uh, believe that there is no distinction between moral and immoral act and these moral or immoral act have no impact or these acts are nothing but karma so these immoral or moral karmas have no impact on the soul means either you kill someone or do some virtuous deeds like helping the destitute or the poor it won't impact your uh, karma Uh, the, all these karma won't impact your soul and therefore have no impact on the uh, life and death or rebirth or transmigration of soul so this was his uh, philosophical doctrine akriyavad then there were other personalities like uh, sanjay belitpattu and your pakuda kachayan why i am focusing or why i am giving you these names and these the doctrines which have been asked because upsc is fond of personalities and you can get a question say which of the following or who among the following were contemporaries of gautam buddha and you can get any of the name among these things fine otherwise also you can get a another type of question like match the following like uh, personality and the associated doctrine say for example purana kashyap with akriyavad your ajita kesh kamling with lokayat or you have makali kosal with your ajivikas so these kind of match the following questions can also be asked one more thing say a question comes who were the contemporaries of buddha political contemporaries means uh, the rulers who were ruling during the time of buddha so you must note down few names like from the region of magadha you have 
two lead uh, kings, your Bimbisar and Ajatashatru. Both of them belong to Haryanak dynasty. Then from Koshal, you have, you just read down, write down Prasanjit. From Koshal, you have Prasanjit. And from Avanti, you have Pradyot, Chandra Pradyot. So these are the three important political personalities which were contemporary to Gautam Buddha. You can even get these kind of questions. So please remember these three names. Fine. So this completes our background. Now you know the answer why it happened or what were the happenings in this religious ring, why the changes were happening, what were the changes which were happening and who were the ones who were bringing these changes. You have a basic idea about this. So you know that it was not only Buddhism, but there were several philosophical schools which were developing during that time. But why only two became prominent, Buddhism and Jainism? Definitely few factors led to uh, expansion of this and the most important was political patronage. Uh, but there was an interesting practice during that time. The practice was that there used to, this period was full of philosophical debates, debates between two different schools. So the practice was, if one school loses in the debate, the followers of this school merges or becomes follower of the other. Say for example, this school is the followers of Gautam Buddha and this school is the follower of say Sanjay Belatpattu. And if this school loses in the debate, the follower or the say there are 10 persons which are or 100 persons who are followers of this, they automatically becomes or merges with uh, this group and becomes follower of Gautam Buddha. So in this way also Buddhism and Jainism must have expanded. And one prominent Buddhist monk with the name of Mogaliputta, he was earlier a follower of Sanjay Belatapat. So please remember this name. Uh, so this was one of the way it was when very interesting practice like uh, by your knowledge, by your capacity to uh, defeat someone through philosophical debates, you earn a prestige in the society or earn the followership in a uh, society. It was a good practice actually. Now we have seen the background thing. Now let's see the sources. The second topic that is sources. So the sources of Buddhism can be divided into two separate headings like canonical and non-canonical sources. Among canonical, the most important ones are among the sources is your three pitakas. Three pitakas, that is your three baskets. Three baskets. And these three baskets are what? The first one is your Vinaya pitaka. Vinaya pitaka. What it stand for? Pitaka. It uh, gives or talks about the establishment of Sangh, S-A-N-G-H-A, Sangh and it also gives the set of rules, set of rules, set of monastic rules. Monastic rules means the rules which the monks living in the monastery need to follow. And these rules, these set of rules was called Patimoka. Please remember this term in Pali because you can expect a question in recent uh, times UPSC is very fond of these kind of terms. So you can get a question uh, with reference to the religious history of India. What does this term Patimokha refer to? It refers to the set of monastic rules in Buddhism. Fine. Then Vinay Pitaka you dealt with. Then second one is your Sut Pitaka. It, this, uh, it comprises of all the discourses given by Gautam Buddha and it is divided into five volumes. The volumes in your Pali language is called your uh, Nikaya. So your Sudh Pitaka is divided into five Nikaya and one important Nikaya among these five is definitely your, please write down the name, is your uh, Kuddak Nikaya. Kuddak Nikaya and it contains the important text like Thedi Gatha, Thera Gatha 
and your Jatakal story. So you can get a separate question like what is this Theri Gatha? Theri Gatha is nothing but the collection of verses of the elder nuns. Please remember, write it down. Theri Gatha is nothing but the verses, collection of verses of elder nuns. Thera Gatha is collection of verses of elder monks. So there is difference of gender only. And Jataka, Jataka stories are nothing but the stories of previous life of Buddha. Please write it down. Jataka stories are nothing but the stories of previous life of Buddha. You can get these terms also in your prelims examination. And then the third one, third one is your Abhidhamma Pitaka. Abhidhamma Pitaka. And what it deals with? It deals with the philosophical underpinnings in the teachings of Buddhism and their interpretation. It gives the philosophical aspect of Buddhism or the teachings of Buddhism. Fine. So these are the three canonical or the three pitakas. You should know the basic uh, content. Say you can expect a question like Vina Pitaka consists of set of monastic rules. Your Sutta Pitaka consists of or uh, contains your discourses are given by Gautam Buddha and the philosophical teachings are contained in Abhidhamma Pitaka. We will see when we will see this uh, Buddhist council that uh, Vinaya Pitaka and Sutta Pitaka were um, written down. All these things were written down after death of Buddha. They were not compiled. They were not compiled during the lifetime of Buddha. They were only compiled after the death of Buddha. Sutta Pitaka and Vina Pitaka were compiled in the first Buddhist council. And your Abhidhamma Pitaka was a later development. It compilation took place in third Buddhist council. Fine. So that is the major uh, thing about sources. For non-canonical sources, please, uh, uh, the most important is your Milind, Milind Panha. It is nothing but the discussion among the Indo discussion between the Indo Greek king Menander, Menander, and and your Buddhist monk Nagasena, Nagasena. So this thing becomes prominent. And what was they discussing? They're discussing about the philosophical question, the life, death, life after death, all these aspects. And this discussion have been compiled in this work, in this book. Melindapana. So you can get this question also. That Melindapana is a discussion among who among the following. So Indo-Greek King Menander and Nagasena Buddhist monk. Other canonical, uh, semi-canonical works are your Deep Vamsa and Mahavamsa. Deep Vamsa and Mahavamsa. They are Mahavamsa. They were compiled. They were compiled in Ceylon in 4th and 5th century CE respectively. So please remember these things only, nothing more than that. So this completes the topic of sources. In the next lecture, we will cover the remaining topics of Buddhism. We'll start with starting with your life of Buddha and the teachings of Buddhism. Fine. To receive the notification for our future lecture, I would ask you, uh, please subscribe to our channel. And if you like this lecture, please like the video also. Fine. Thank you.